I have not had the best of luck with computer monitors lately, as detailed in my short Monitor Roulette video series. In 2017, I invested in a big LG 31MU97 panel so I could start producing more professional video courses with greater color accuracy. And then in fall 2018, I wanted a second similarly high quality panel to match with it. This resulted in a huge mess. A monitor that wasn't the right fit, that LG monitor outright dying due to a flaw, and ultimately me landing on the Dell UP2718Q. This was the monitor I originally wanted to upgrade to and then decided not to for some reason. And thanks to Dell, I now have two. After a few months working with these bad boys, it's time for a review. But spoiler alert, this was the first professional HDR10 certified 4K monitor, and it's still the best. Seriously. Full disclosure time, I purchased my main display in my first UP2718Q from Dell's website after the whole ordeal in my monitor roulette series for myself. Following a month or two of using this monitor and realizing there was no real hope for reviving my other production panel that it was supposed to pair with it, I reached out to Dell and arranged for a review sample of a second one so I could have matching sets for color grading, dual monitor editing, and review. No one has seen this review before it is posted telling me what to say, paying for this review, anything like that. This is the Dell UltraSharp UP2718Q, a 27 inch 3840 by 2160 4K UHD 10-bit HDR panel. This thing is a beast. Physically, it is quite large. These are thick boy monitors, not paper thin bezel-less ornaments. I truly don't even mind monitor bezels like this. They keep, they're nice and they keep things framed properly, but the monitors are thick and they put out a lot of heat and they are quite heavy on my dual monitor arm on my desk here at 13.18 pounds each. They put a lot of strain on the monitor arms, which makes it hard to keep them evenly flush for the OCD folk out there. And they also put out a lot more heat compared to normal consumer oriented monitors, like a lot more. The monitor features two HDMI 2.0 ports with MHL support, so you can get 4K, 60Hz, and HDR over HDMI, which is what I've been using for my Xbox One X and PS4 Pro gaming. There's also a full size mini display port input. The cool extra option here is that this monitor features two USB 3.0 hub connections. Now I don't actually end up using this for the specific feature as it's designed in my current setup, but I could see myself doing so in a future desk rebuild. But this monitor can act as a KVM where you map one of the specific hubs to a specific input and the second hub to another input or a hub to multiple inputs. And then as you switch inputs, the USB devices are also switched to the PC that the input goes to. Pretty neat, so that way you have your mouse and keyboard hooked up to the monitor, for example, and then you switch inputs on the monitor and it also switches your mouse and keyboard over to the, that, second, that second computer. However, two of the USB ports are on the side of the monitor, which is handy and accessible for sure, but it means if you have two paired together, the right monitor's ports will always be blocked off. I would have also loved to see an integrated USB 3 card reader on the side for us video people as well. The panel itself is IPS, which generally means it's great for video production, photo editing, color grading, and so on. And again, it is at 4K 60 Hertz. It has a typical brightness of 400 nits with a peak brightness of 1000 nits, which makes it perfect for that HDR use. Admittedly, I don't really have any means of testing HDR quality, nor do I have a ton of use for it other than some casual movie or HDR video viewing or gaming, but the implementation here is quite nice regardless, if not incredibly bright. This was actually one of the first, if not the first, HDR monitor that Linus reviewed a year or two ago, and it's perhaps the first monitor to meet the HDR10 standards, according to Dell's sites. And between that and based on my experience with a few other monitors and watching countless reviews of others, it might still be the best. One thing that has greatly improved since the review, however, is that Windows 10's HDR implementation. It's still not great. By default, the Windows UI still dims and doesn't have the adaptation to the normal HDR color space, but it is better than it was, and this specific monitor has a smart HDR option in the settings, which allows it to keep SDR content at what you would consider normal brightness, and then have the HDR at full range, which keeps Windows usable with HDR enabled. Admittedly, there's a little bit of different, you know, extra gamma compared to running the monitor in SDR mode, so things won't look perfect one-to-one -one as they would in terms of Windows UI, but it makes a huge difference. It's actually usable here. This feature, along with virtually no halo effect in high contrast scenarios, completely sealed the deal on me switching to this monitor from the ASUS PA32UC I originally was trying. Dell lists a 6 millisecond gray-to-gray -gray response time for the UP2718Q. 
Using both the Leo Bodnar Monitor Latency Tester and the Time Sleuth, I measured a 1.3 to 1.4 millisecond black to white latency, which is pretty dang fast. Nothing noticeable when gaming, for sure. In the menus, the monitor has a response time option of normal or fast. I typically keep it at normal, but using my latency tester, neither option seem to have impacted my result, oddly enough, so I don't know what that actually does. The big selling point about monitors like these is their super sharp color accuracy and color and bit depth support, as well as color space support, and being accurately calibrated with a delta E of less than 2 for Adobe RGB and sRGB right out of the box. This monitor supports full 10-bit color, and yes, that even works on some GeForce cards, despite common belief, including the 1080, 1080 Ti, 2080, 2080 Ti, newer Titans, and so on. It supports 100% coverage of Adobe RGB, sRGB, Rec. 709, and 97.7% .7 of the DCI-P3 color space, and 76.9% of Rec. 2020. This means that the monitor is ready to go for high, even high-end and color-accurate needs for video production and photo editing, and for people like myself who rarely get good results when calibrating, it is ready to go out of the box, which is nice, although you are, you know, pretty much everyone will recommend that you calibrate it every few months anyway. The Dell UP2718Q also features picture-in-picture -picture and picture-by-picture -picture modes, so you can view a small window of another input while allowing your main input full screen or setting up side-by-side -side inputs or four-way inputs or what have you. So when you when you do the picture by picture, what is kind of cool is that it will, it will actually tell your computer that the monitor is half the width for like some portrait mode window organization. I'm not personally a fan of this workflow, but I know some people that actually use it quite a bit. For me, the arrow snap controls from Windows 7 up to Windows 10 help me organize my windows great. But the feature is a nice inclusion. Overall, these monitors are very high quality, super color accurate, and have allowed me to really work on improving my color grading for my photos and videos and realizing how horrible some of my older videos look. <laughs> they're heavy and they're hot, and they don't support high refresh rates or anything like that, but they have been great for my video production setup. I was also impressed at just how many issues I had with the PA32UC that aren't present on these panels. None of that weird over sharpening that I couldn't get rid of on the ASUS, no haloing from poor local dimming support, and then no vignetting from being too large since these are 27 inch instead of 31 inch. Since my desk is only two feet deep, I'm always less than two feet from my monitors and the 32 inch was just too large to see without it being curved to see the light from all corners at once, whereas 27 inch seems to be the perfect 4K, 4K panel size for me. Plus the smart HDR functionality is really freaking cool. I'm still finding my way through the monitor space, but I'm happy to be done with the hassle of and mess of finding out, you know, the right production monitors for me from the beginning of the year. And I'm incredibly grateful to Dell for hooking me up with the second one so I can have my first ever pair of matching monitors that I've ever owned. I only reached out after I was confident with my purchase in the first one, and I'm definitely confident in recommending them to other prosumers and enthusiasts looking to set up their monitor gains for their video production needs. Affiliate product links will be in the description down below as always. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Uh, maybe consider checking out my other monitor videos on the channel or that monitor roulette series or maybe this cool Nintendo Switch setup video. I'm Eples Vox here to make tech easier and more fun and I hope to see you in a future video or past videos or something. See ya.